My name is Sunita Devono Powell, and um, we're really happy that you're here for this session. Um, we are going to be talking about uh, preservation. So this um, listening session is a co-production of the Othering and Belonging Institute and Groundworks Consulting. Um, the Othering and Belonging Institute is a center for scholarship, research, community partnerships, and strategies at the University of California, Berkeley. I'm gonna have all of the facilitators from Groundworks and OBI introduce themselves. Um, and part of what we're gonna be presenting today are uh, goals, objectives, and metrics to guide ba the BAFA process. And that has been um, a collaboration with the Equity Working Group some members of whom I think are here today. Um, <clears throat> so uh, let's do quick introductions of everyone who's facilitating and then I'll talk about the goals and the agenda. Um, so again, my name is Sunita Tavono Powell, pronouns are she, they, um, and I'll pass it to Marissa. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Marissa Raya. I'm facilitating today with Groundworks Consulting. I'm a, a she, any, and I will pass, I think I can pass straight to OBI, yeah. um, to Joe. Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Joe Ehrenholtz, he, him pronouns, um, and I work with the Equity Metrics Program at the Othering and Belonging Institute. And I'll pass it to Nicole. Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Montojo. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a staff researcher at the Othering and Belonging Institute. I will pass it to Eli. Hi all, uh, Eli Moore, he, him, Othering and Belonging Institute, part of the Community Power and Policy Partnerships team, and I'll pass it to Francesca. Thanks, Eli. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Francesca. I use she and they pronouns, and I'm also supporting housing work at the Othering and Belonging Institute, and I will pass it to Mylana. Hi, everyone. My name is Mylana. I'm a graduate student researcher at the Othering and Belonging Institute. Did we get everybody? Yeah, I think we did. So thank you. And I see some folks are still coming in. Um, for those of you who are just joining in, we're here yesterday. Um, the next 10 minutes are going to be a repeat. Um, so you're welcome to take a break, step away from your computer and come back um, or just hang tight. Um, so let's go to the next slide. Um, so we have two goals today. Um, the first is to review the equity framework development process and BAFA business plan process um, and talk about opportunities for ongoing engagement. And then the second is to discuss and provide suggestions on the draft goals um, and housing preservation objectives and metrics. Uh, these are all drafts and we are gonna try and elicit your input in as many ways as possible in a short period of time. And there will be other opportunities for input. Next slide. Um, so here we are at the end of our welcome. Uh, we're gonna, Eli's gonna kick us off with an overview of BAFA and the process, and then we'll have a presentation on the equity framework. And then we'll move into breakout groups for discussion. Uh, and come back for a quick Q&A. And then after that, for folks who wanna stay on longer, we'll have a optional open discussion for about a half hour. Uh, so I'll pass it over to Eli. Thanks, Anita. So I'm gonna give some of the context, um, beginning with the basics. So what is BAFA, the Bay Area Housing Finance Authority? Um, Next slide. So we'll um, we'll be talking about the plans that BAFA is making as it gets up and running. BAFA was created um, through state legislation, um, and it's really just this year staffing up and looking at how it can generate revenue um, and begin to do its work. Um, the, the the main powers that BAFA was set up to have 
are to raise and deploy funding to produce new affordable housing, preserve existing affordable housing, and protect tenants. Um, secondly, to provide set technical assistance to local jurisdictions to complement and fortify their housing efforts. And then lastly, to, to generate regional data and communications to inform housing policy and programs in the region. So this is our the Bay Area's first regional housing organization, um, public agency. Um, and so it's really a historic development and opportunity to, to um, address the, the major housing and um, inequities, uh, the issues and equities that we have in the region. So um, the legislation also set some very specific requirements and parameters about what BAFA would do with revenue that it um, puts towards housing. So um, they named several possible revenue strategies that BAFA could use, including general obligation bonds, parcel taxes, head taxes, and gross receipt taxes as sort of options that BAFA could explore um, and, and pursue for, for generating revenue. And then the legislation um, gave a set of minimums and maximums about what percentage of the funds would go to these different um, uh, program strategies, the three Ps. So a minimum of 52% has to go to production, minimum of 15% goes to preservation, and a minimum of 5% goes to protection, um, and then up to 5% on administration, um, up to 10% on local government grants, and then there's a remaining 13% that's flexible. Um, so those are, those are some guardrails written into the legislation about what BAFA can do, and then the last piece that's relevant here is if BAFA does um, pursue a general obligation bond, then 80% of the funds generated would return to the county of origin uh, where those uh, funds were proportionately to where they were generated, um, and that they could only be used for bricks and sticks, construction, capital costs. Next slide, please. So what is the equity framework in the business plan and, and where does that fit into BAFA's design? Um, the business plan is really the plan for how um, BAFA will do its work, what its program designs will be, what its financing strategies will be, um, and how those are anchored in an analysis and a, a, a plan for advancing social equity in the region. And BAFA has done something that, that stands out um, in that they've, they've made the social equity framework the foundation, not kind of the afterthought, um, as is done too often. And so this work on the equity framework is setting um, goals and objectives and metrics that, that then are going to be the basis for um, designing the program strategies that go into the business plan. Next slide. So, so far the process of developing the equity framework has been um, initially a review of regional plans and policies and community proposals, uh, and then a set of interviews with 20 equity leaders across the region. And then the formation of the equity working group, you saw the members on the earlier slide, and they started meeting over the last couple of months. Um, and all of that um, has led to a set of draft goals and objectives and metrics that you're gonna be discussing today. Um, at this listening session, which is the second of three, we had the one on production yesterday and the one on protection is Friday. Next slide. So where this all goes, the, the process overall. So th this visual shows the top row are the decision points by the official BAFA decision-making bodies, the oversight, um, BAFA Oversight Committee and the, the ABAG Housing Committee and the BAFA Advisory Committee. 
um, will receive a draft equity framework and provide feedback. Um, and then after another loop of um, iteration and engagement, then they will see a final equity framework and um, and adopt the the version that that they decide to adopt. Um, they're the ultimate decision makers, and that will happen at the end of this year or January next year. Um, so the equity working group has been meeting and developing the framework draft that you're look that you're going to see today. That's coming into these listening sessions and then going back to the equity working group for further refining, um, and then that goes to the BAFA decision makers. Um, and then in October, November, there will also be um, public workshops on the draft equity framework. Um, and then final revisions for the version that goes to the BAFA staff and BAFA oversight bodies. So that's the process overall. Next slide. So what is the framework? Um, the framework has these three components. The goals are very high level, um, universal society conditions that BAFA's work should be striving toward. They're, they're the sort of what is the future of the Bay Area's um, housing systems, housing conditions that we all want to see that our communities are calling for or envisioning. Um, and that's not just goals that BAFA alone can achieve these goals. Um, they're the kind of um, grand conditions that um, BAFA will contribute to. But the objectives are really about what BAFA specifically will be trying to achieve. So those are the specific outcomes that BAFA actions will bring about. This is the, the destination that, that BAFA's plans will be trying to reach. And then the metrics are really just how BAFA will measure progress towards achieving those objectives, the kind of yardsticks to say how close are we getting to those outcomes named in the objectives. Um, so that's what we'll be talking more about today. And um, this just shows how we're thinking about the goals being on the far right, the aspirational can ultimate North Star. Um, and then there's sort of three tracks of the protection work that BAFA is doing and objectives and metrics related to that, the preservation work that BAFA is doing and the objectives and metrics for those, and then the production work, um, all leading towards those aspirational goals. So that's what the equity framework is. And I think with that, I'll turn it over to Francesca. Thanks, Eli. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and present on the um, draft equity goals. There are eight of them. Um, and then Joe's going to present on the objectives and metrics. Um, I did want to mention that we set some time aside at the end of this listening session um, for Q&A. So as we're reading the goals, objectives, and metrics, if questions come up for you, um, please do put them in the chat. We're collecting those questions um, and saving them for that later time. Um, and we're also going to drop in the chat a document with the objectives and metrics. So as Joe is sharing them, y'all can follow along. Um, but yeah, next slide, please. Um, so the first uh, draft goal is choice and opportunity. This goal states that all people, regardless of race or income, have autonomy in deciding how and where they live, whether that means staying in their existing home or community or moving to a different one and accessing opportunities and resources within their community. These include quality schools and jobs, well-maintained transit and other public infrastructure systems, neighborhoods free from violence and home and community-based services and amenities that support health and well-being. The next goal is stable, affordable housing for all. Every resident enjoys a safe, stable, accessible, affordable, and habitable home. Goal number three is security and belonging. Some other words that we're playing around for, with this goal are safety, acceptance, and integration. 
Um, this goal states that every Bay Area resident has a sense of security in and belonging to their local community and the region, which is manifested through social systems and trusting relationships that ensure that they are fully integrated into the community and that their full range of human needs are met and cared for. Number four is neighborhood stabilization and cultural preservation. Families and individuals have the ability to stay in their homes, maintain community connections, and preserve the cultural fabrics of their neighborhoods without being displaced by unaffordable housing costs, policy decisions, or other forces. Moving on to number five, community self-determination and participation. Um, most people, People most impacted by the housing affordability crisis have the power to collectively shape the future of their communities. Number six touches on repair. Um, this goal states that public institutions and social systems are transformed in order to acknowledge and when possible, repair the harms and indignities of historic and contemporary housing policies, practices, and systems that have perpetuated racial and social inequities. This includes the advancement of opportunities for historically marginalized communities to build economic and social wealth, both at the individual and community level. Our second, um, our second to last uh, social equity goal touches on the topic of environmental health and justice and states that homes have healthy living conditions and neighborhood environments such that no community is disproportionately exposed to air pollution, climate change effects, or other hazards. Persons and communities have viable opportunities to make choices that reduce climate impacts, and the design, location, and construction of homes reduces climate impacts. And finally, number eight is prevention. The Bay Area's housing ecosystem has built in structural safeguards that respond to moments of crisis to prevent people from experiencing housing precarity, thereby ending homelessness throughout the region. And I'll go ahead and pass it to Joe. Well, thanks, Francesca. Um, so that brings us to the draft preservation objectives and metrics. And to re reiterate what Eli mentioned, the objectives um, represent the specific ways that FAFA could operationalize the equity goals. And the, and the metrics are the met methods by which FAFA can measure the progress of each objective. Next slide. So objective 2.1 is to finance acquisition and rehab of housing to increase and stabilize healthy living conditions and allow vulnerable tenants to remain in their homes with long-term affordability, especially in equity priority communities. Um, so let me go ahead and define equity priority communities because the term will come up in later objectives. Um, so the term refers to census tracts across the Bay Area region that um, MTC ABAG is identified as having significant concentrations of historically underserved populations. Um, and this includes, but is not limited to, people with low incomes, people of color, seniors, people with disabilities, and severely rent burdened households. So metrics for objective um, 2.1 um, uh, would include funds delivered to acquisition and rehab of housing. Um, and funds delivered to BIPOC-led orgs that work in housing preservation. Um, and then metrics would also be included around the number and percent, percent of preserved units um, by affordability level, um, deed restricted term, housing type, tenure type, homes reserved for people with disabilities who use supportive services by scale and location. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and then there's a third set of metrics um, for objective 2.1 focused on people served by those preserved units. Um, so this would include number and percent of residents by race, ethnicity, and ancestry, uh, disability status, need of supportive services, uh, length of time living in the city, age of resident, residents with children, affordability level, deed restriction term, uh, housing type, tenure type, and scale. Uh, next slide, please. 
So objective 2.2 is to create opportunities for lower income communities and communities of color to build stability and achieve equity via innovative ownership models such as land trust and limited equity co-ops, especially in equity priority communities. Um, metrics for this objective include funds delivered to BIPOC led organizations that do housing preservation, um, funds delivered to new projects created in land trusts, limited equity co-ops, and other innovative ownership models. Um, and then after funding, we'd look at the number and percent of new units within any innovative ownership models um, by similar categories that I mentioned uh, for the previous objective. Uh, next slide. And then after funding, uh, we again look at people served. So this would be represented by the number and percent of new homeowners via innovative models, by race, ethnicity, and ancestry, disability status, status and so on. Um, next slide, please. Subjective so 2.3 is to encourage municipalities to reduce regulatory costs of affordable housing preservation through reforms such as providing faster and simpler approval processes and loosening land use regula regulations and restrictions. So related metrics include funding delivered to capacity building and technical assistance programs, um, as well as the number and percent of preserved units in participating municipalities. Um, these would be disaggregated by many of the same categories that I mentioned before. Uh, next slide. And after preserved units, we again move into measuring people served um, by way of number and percent of residents in preserved housing, um, specifically in the municipalities that participate in capacity building and technical assistance. Um, and again, disaggregated by the following categories. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, objective 2.4 is that communities most impacted by housing disparities are owners or institutional leaders in the organizations or firms funded to engage in preservation activities. Um, the related metrics include the amount of funding going to organizations with a majority of management roles held by historically underserved populations, as well as number and share of these populations in decision making and management roles. Um, uh, at organizations involved in BAFA funded projects. Next slide, please. All right, thanks for bearing with me. This is the last uh, draft objective under preservation. Um, so objective 2.5 is to preserve properties prioritized uh, by community organi organizations accountable to BIPOC communities. Um, and the related draft metrics include the number of properties identified for BAFA funding um, that have been prioritized by BIPOC-led community-based organizations. And the second metric um, essentially speaks to tracking those properties through awarded funding. Uh, next slide, please, and I'll pass it to Sunita. Thank you, Joe. Um, so that was a lot. And what we wanna do is we're gonna send you all into smaller groups to have uh, more of a conversation. But we wanna take a few minutes and let everyone just, you have the link to the slides, you have the link to the objectives and metrics. Um, so we're gonna give you six minutes to just um, look at them, write down any notes, think about what you might wanna share or recommend. And I'm gonna drop some links in the chat. And we will play some music and we will um, send you into breakouts at 2.35. Hey everybody, welcome back. Time flies when you're talking about equity frameworks. Um, so we have some time now for um, cross-cutting questions that came up in the breakout rooms and um, And uh, you either want to ask that to the to the speakers, to the facilitation team, um, or make sure that it get, it gets shared out. Um, so, were there any questions that um, any of the facilitators or participants want to share from the breakout rooms? Yeah, Marissa. I um, 
I just wanted to add to start us off by saying that our group had a really good conversation towards the end around the pipeline for um, identifying buildings and identifying leaders that can participate in BAFA um, and thinking about outreach, for example, to existing more informal cooperatives, um, LGBTQ. A was an, a cooperative was given as one example, um, and how does BAFA identify the pipeline of buildings um, to consider for financing, and how is the engagement and outreach done around that opportunity, as well as um, working within the neighborhoods to identify who are the potential leaders that might um, have the ability and capacity and um, passion to organize tenant purchases or cooperatives or land trusts. That's great. Thanks for sharing that. Other reflections or questions coming out of the breakout rooms? We had some agreement around the need for technical assistance for small nonprofits that are working to um, create, both create and preserve affordable housing. Uh, there are a lot of organizations, in some cases churches, that are in communities that have been gentrified and that are historically, um, in my case, working with the city of Berkeley, historically black. Um, I believe in the case of my colleague with, from Oakland as well. Um, that are not able to uh, move forward because of the need for technical assistance uh, being so strong. Um, and uh, staff in cities have had to cre create a lot of um, kind of best practices around that and spend a lot of time and therefore funding uh, and assisting that process. So having additional funds for technical assistance for housing preservation or having a best practices program uh, would be really outstanding. Makes sense. Thank you. And we've been taking notes in the for the small groups. We took notes in the slides. So if you're curious what to know more detail about what was discussed in the other breakout rooms, you can peruse the slides. Um, starting on slide 34, you'll see notes from each of the breakout rooms. Other reflections or questions coming out of the small group discussion? I see your comment, Marissa, and we had a little bit of a discussion about this as well, and both like, um, how are these metrics collected? <laughs> um, how often, what will be the process of alignment if the progress is or isn't being made? Um, and those are like larger, I think, process questions, but important. I had something I could jump in with real fast. Uh, our, our group, uh, Mercer's group, we also talked about um, kind of a further integration of the climate goals, um, especially in 2.1 and 2.2, 2.1 being the easiest place to start bringing it in uh, because of what it already says about rehabilitation and health and, and making sure that decarbonization a part of that, and then uh, somebody also brought in uh, embodied carbon as being a part of those uh, goals. And with 2.2, kind of looking at that from a self-determination and with these innovative new models as those are developing, also making sure that folks are empowered with options for how to meet climate goals and letting them really drive that process as well. Thank you, Laura. And, and on the, the question about the data plan, so we'll, there are kind of two pieces there. One is like, how are we, how, how is BAFA gathering this data? Um, and um, that'll be part of uh, some of the recommendations coming out of the, the equity framework process. Um, but then it also, it'll be detailed in more detail in the business plan, especially around the the program models, because those will um, 
those will i'm not sure if they'll they'll actually write out targets for the outcomes um but that that would be the next step once they have the program designs is to actually set some targets for what um they're trying to achieve on on each of these metrics with the programs they're adopting Other questions? Maybe we could take one more comment or question. Um, I just had a question. I know that there was a white paper written around preservation and BAFA. I was just curious, like, had any of that been incorporated into some of the objectives and, and some of the stuff that in your process of coming up with these? Which white paper? I'm not sure which one you're talking about. It was a white paper around preservation strategies for BAFA, I believe, um, how, yeah, in supporting certain shared equity models. I could share it in the, in the I could, well, actually, I don't know how I would share a link in the chat, but I can email it to you all. Oh, yeah, the, the urban habitat one? Yes. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Um, well, maybe we can turn to the, the opportunities for engagement. So we just wanted to lift up a few of the upcoming dates and decision, um, public decision points um, for people to stay engaged. Um, so we'll be sending out um, information from all three of the sessions to all of you. Um, so you'll get an email with the slides from all three of the listening sessions, even if you didn't go to all of them, um, as well as a Google form that you can fill out for each of the three Ps. It's the same form, but if you want to um, fill it out for each of the three Ps, then um, that's fine. There's no issue doing it multiple times. Um, Please don't game the system, though. <laughs> um, and um, and we're looking to get comments on the draft equity framework by Monday, June 20th, um, so in about 10 days. Um, and that's with that, that Google form that I just mentioned that's in the chat and here on the slide, and also was emailed to you in the reminder email you got today. Um, and the final listening session is on Friday, um, this Friday, about protection strategies. Um, and then the next meeting of the BAFA Oversight Committee is Thursday, June 9th at 1 p.m. The Zoom link is, is here in the slides. Um, you can also sign up for the BAFA mailing list. And then if you want to reach out to us around the OBI equity framework development process, um you can email any of any of us who are here today or just email equitable housing at berkeley.edu all right so um so the last uh chunk of time we have here is for um getting your input through this google form and and this is um just another channel through which you can give specific feedback um there's some open-ended questions in the form and um, feel free to, you know, share broad concerns or questions you have or really specific edits and, and wording suggestions. Uh, so the, the link is in the chat and um, we'll take uh, 10 minutes or so for everybody to, to respond. Thank you. Thank you all for participating. Um, for providing your input in multiple ways, maybe not multiple times, as Eli said. Um, and we appreciate you taking the time. Um, we had blocked off uh, the next half hour to dig into any issues that people wanted to spend a little bit more time on. Um, so, uh, in yesterday's session, there were a few pretty distinct topics that folks were interested in reflecting on. Um, I'd love to take a pulse from 
those of you who are here who want to stay, um, if there are particular issues that you would like to spend some time discussing. Um, you're welcome to share them verbally, put them in the chat. Thanks, Liz. Thanks, Lords. And I see people logging off, so I'm thinking that maybe that is not necessarily needed or wanted. But if I'm incorrect, feel free to speak up. Um, thanks so much. Oh, I saw a hand raised. Sarah. Yeah, just real quick. Um, I, I think maybe partially people are tired, but also partially this has been really well done. Um, like I, no, seriously, I, I, the, a lot of the feedback that people in, um, preservation space and the CLT community and others had provided got incorporated. Um, so I just want to applaud all the people that made that happen. So, uh, just putting that out there. Thank you, Sarah. It's nice to know that silence isn't because it's totally off base. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think that's a lot of it just to be honest. I totally appreciate that. Um, thank you, Violet. And um, yeah, we will keep on trying and appreciate all feedback in any form. And I know it's been a long week, month, year. So um, I hope you all do something relaxing with this next half hour of your afternoon. Thank you. Take care.